Hey everyone, this is a review of the new Craig 720 Pro pocket hole jig. This will be replacing the K5 as Craig's flagship pocket hole jig model, and I'm going to go over lots of improvements they've made on this jig, as well as a few major drawbacks that it has. So let's get right down to it. So to start off with, the biggest improvement Craig has to this jig is the Automax clamping technology. So that automatically sets the height of this drill guide block to the thickness of your material and clamps it no matter what thickness it is from a half inch all the way up to one and a half inches. That's a really useful feature. You do still have to adjust the drill guide collar to make it stop in the right spot, um, but that, that takes one step out of having to adjust everything. One minor gripe I had with this, with the clamping mechanism, is the tension adjustment. So this gives you looser or tighter clamping force depending on which way you turn it. I took it out of the box, looked at it, and said, awesome, if I want to crank it up tighter, I go this way, because righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, and plus is this way, but you'll notice there's no arrow that tells you to turn it that way. There's a tiny little mark right here that you can barely see, doesn't have any paint on it, and that's what you line up. So we're actually lining that up with the lowest tension setting right now, and now it's on the highest. So that's a mistake I made. I had to go read the manual to figure this out because it seemed like I turned it all the way up, and I was like, it seems like it got worse. And that's exactly what happened because it wasn't intuitively designed. I just needed to go read the manual. Now, one major problem I have with this clamping mechanism is there's a lot more play in it because it's a more complicated linkage than the older K4 and K5 designs. So you see all this play in here. If you push down, you don't get it perfectly down. And, and this is going to happen when you're using it. You're going to push it down, and you're going to have a little bit of sideways force. It can catch right here. You can see there's already chunks out of my plastic where these rivets have caught, and they've actually stopped me from clamping before when I'm putting this down, and you just kind of have to let up, readjust, and push it back down. So it's, it's, I really don't like how loose this clamping mechanism is right here because you can run into the side right here. And I don't think it's gonna cause any major structural damage over time, um, but it's, it's really annoying just go to clamp and get hung up halfway. And over time, this will probably wear enough that it won't hang up anymore, but that's not a great way to design something. So one advantage of this 720 Pro is it does have a steel spine that goes all the way through the body of the jig. So it goes from down here and then up through here. Uh, and it's 3 16 inch, it's pretty thick, uh, and it's going to withstand the clamping force pretty well that you're putting on this thing. Now one downside to the Automax is you've got a long throw pretty much every time you clamp this. Um, three quarters is the material I usually use with this. And you've got to push it all the way down here, and there's a good bit of force you've got to put down here at the bottom. So it's a lot more travel than you've got with the K5. Uh, and personally, when I set up the K5, I set it up and I use the same thickness of workpiece for quite a while until I need to switch to something else. So it's not a big deal for me to take a few seconds to set up the K5 for the thickness of workpiece I'm using rather than automatically doing this. Now, if you switch back and forth between workpieces a whole bunch, then maybe this is something you really, really want. Now with the K5, I think setup is actually pretty easy with this. You just pull the clamp all the way back, take this pin out, set your workpiece thickness that you're going to be using, put your workpiece in, clamp, then push your clamp all the way up to the workpiece, hold it in place, lift this till you hear a click, and then push it down, and you're all set up. So now you can unclamp and put in the same thickness workpiece over and over again. So it's really not that bad to set up the K5. And after you have it set up, I think it's a much simpler motion with one degree of force. You don't have multiple spots where you hit higher degrees of force like you do with the 720 Pro. And another thing about the K5 that I really like is how sturdy the clamping mechanism. There's a little bit of play in it, but this is pretty much just a straight half-inch solid pull rod that you're putting all the clamping force on, um, and it's, it's super sturdy. And there's a lot shorter throw for this clamping lever as well. So the only real adjustment you need to make for this jig when you're doing different thickness work pieces is how high you set your stop collar on your drill bit. So they've got a holder here you can click it into, and if you line up the bottom of the collar, with this line, you can set it for these different thickness of work pieces, and it'll be the right spot. And you've got your onboard wrench right here, uh, and you can use this as a gauge as well. See, we fall in the three quarter inch range. Um, so actually, this doesn't have three quarters on it, but in this case, 
there is three quarters written right onto the drill bit and you line up the hole in the stop collar with it and tighten it down. And then you're ready to drill for this thickness of material. You can use this gauge for a couple different areas. Um, this one's one and a half inch, so we're gonna use it with the one and a half inch setting on this drill bit. And this one also has a half inch as well. Those are probably your three most common sizes. So for that, you don't even have to take the drill out of your, the drill bit out of your drill and put it in here. You can just adjust it on the fly. And I like that system. And they have this system with most of their other new jigs as well. And if you really want to, you can go and buy this setup separately uh, and use it with the K5 and the K4 and any other old drill bit systems, pocket hole systems that don't come with this. The K5 is quite a bit more convoluted in setting that stop collar depth. And the way that works is you take a selection chart, and there are more thorough ones than this, and you figure out your screw length that you're going to be using with your material. Make sure this is set to your material thickness that you're actually doing the pocket hole in. And then, depending on your screw length, you just drop this in here, and obviously, that's not the right setting. Um, there we go, one and a quarter inch for a three quarter inch setting, and we'd set our stop collar right there, which it already is at. So this is a little more cumbersome. I like the new system better. So one thing to note uh, that's a downside to this one for drilling ergonomics is you have to turn your drill to the side because if you have a drill with an 18 volt battery pack that sticks way out, you can see it hits right here already and I'm not even into the workpiece yet. So you've got to turn the whole thing sideways and then drill in. Not a huge deal, but it's an annoyance and it doesn't let you work in the way that's most comfortable for you if you want your drill straight up and down. All right, let's talk versatility with this. So for this, you can actually flip it on its side and you can still use these because it's the same thickness. It's also the thickness of a two by four. So you want to use that instead. And you can clamp big sheet goods or long work pieces that if you stood up would hit your ceiling in this without much trouble at all. So I like this feature that you can flip it up on its side. You absolutely can't do that with the K4 and the K5 designs. It's a huge improvement. Now, if you did have some awkwardly placed work that you had to use with the K4 and the K5, you can just pull this pin, pull the whole guide block out of it, and clamp this individually to a workpiece. There's no way to do that with this new 720 Pro, and I think that is a huge failing on Craig's part. So this does have a removable guide block like that, but when you pull it out and you can swap it out with different drilling accessories, can you clamp that easily to another workpiece? There's no flat surface here to clamp it with. And I like this is just thin, thinner plastic. It doesn't feel as sturdy. Um, this one has metal pretty much. I mean, this is solid. It's glass filled nylon and metal. This one is mostly plastic except for the hardened steel drill guides, which only extend this length. So you'd be clamping here, not on metal, and it's not flat, it's not parallel. There's not a good clamping surface. So what Craig needs to do to fix this right now is make an accessory that clips into this that makes this face parallel with this face so you can clamp this to a separate workpiece. So with the K5, you've got this little accessory in the master kit that you can clamp down to a workpiece and you can slide the individual drill guides into. Um, and that's what they need to include with the 720 Pro. Just something compatible with those drill guides because I've got the micro pocket hole cutter and the plug cutter both for the K5, and this one you really don't need to use separately from the jig. So it's fine that this one they've got um, for the 720 Pro, it's fine that this one can't be used separately. I don't think that's something you really need. However, with the micro pocket hole cutter, um, there's no way to use this separately, and that's a huge problem, and here's why. Because if you're in the middle of a project, and you've got things partially glued up, partially assembled, and you realize you forgot a pocket hole. How are you gonna cut it with this one? Because there's no way to, to move this into a workpiece. You have to have end access for this one. You have to have a lot of space around it. With the, with the Craig, you could take either the regular guide block or this guide block and clamp them straight to a workpiece and drill a hole. Craig has abandoned the ability to do that with the 720 Pro. Another thing Craig did that I think really was not cool was you've gotta buy all new specialty guides for this because they're not backwards compatible. So with the 720 Pro, if, if you've got a K5 and you've got all these accessories, you're going to have to spend double the money on this new system because you've gotta buy all new guides. Plus the 720 Pro is not compatible with the HD drill guide. I don't have that one, but if you use that one with your K5, which it is compatible with, you've got no option to do it with this 
uh, new 720 Pro. So let's talk about the extension wings. These things come with the 720 Pro kit. You can also buy them separately with the docking adapter kit, but it's just a lot cheaper to buy the big kit by itself, or altogether rather, uh, than piecemeal this. Now, I like these because they're a lot bigger. Um, they've got a lot more space in them. And this one has separate organization, and you can even fit the clamp for clamping down the whole thing to the workbench in here as well. Um, so this is, this is a great addition to storage. Um, and you've got a lot more space and versatility with this. It also fits the dust adapter, the smaller portion on this side as well, and you can close it. When you're done working, you can fold these up, which is a, a feature you could not do with the K5. So this takes up a lot less shelf space. Um, with the, the K5, I have it permanently mounted on a board and I just hang it on the wall. With this one, you can actually fit it on a shelf somewhere. Now, what I don't like about these extension wings is how ridiculously flimsy they are. So that is... That is not inspiring confidence in me right here. And all that's holding these things up are these, these tiny little clips that rotate. So you rotate these down and set it down. Now, see what I did here? I didn't turn it all the way down, which I've done a couple times by accident. There's a stop you've got to turn it down to, so this clip is down there. Watch what happens when you open up this with this sticking up above the edge. Whoops. Now, luckily, that doesn't break the piece. It just pops off, but you have to go find it somewhere, and eventually, it might end up breaking it. So close that back up, pop that back in, and make sure you always have that tip down below here before you open up these extension wings. The other thing I don't like about the extension wings is when they're down, look how much flex these things have. That's ridiculous. And it's just this tiny little thin plastic here that's holding these together. Now, if you want to take these off, it is pretty easy to remove these. And the docking adapter that, that Craig is calling these little things slide out because they've got a little keyhole slot. Note that these are almost impossible to assemble the first time. Mine's really chewed up already, um, and I had to use a screwdriver to leverage these sideways into the keyhole slots. I actually went and looked at the instructions just to make sure I wasn't crazy because it was so hard to do. Now, if you don't have these things on and you don't have the docking adapter kit, you can actually open this up and it's got a workpiece support, and I like that feature about it. So this is a really nice extra addition, uh, and you can also put a 2x4, just like all the other pocket hole jigs that are bench-mounted that, that Craig has, um, that also supports your workpieces. It's just one and a half inches tall, whether you're in this configuration or this configuration. When you've got this wing open, you can also access this screw hole to screw the whole jig down to a workbench if you want it permanently installed. I like that feature, but you can't access it if you've got the extension wings installed because this clips into the bottom and you can't open these with these clips in there. So there's no way when you have the wings installed in the jig itself to open this and screw it down. Now Craig has a solution for that because they've got screw holes here in these individual wings. So you can screw the wings down and then you can slide your whole jig on and off of those and leave these extra support arms in place. All right, so the thing I don't like about the support arms, other than how flimsy they are, is when you screw them down right here, if you screw them down a little bit too hard or too close or compress the wood at all, they pop up on the outside. That would be fine if you had a spot to screw these down on on the outside, but you don't. They're, they're just connected at this side. So if you, you have to mess around with how tight your screws are on here to make sure these don't pop up. I think if I was going to keep this long term, I'd end up putting a screw hole in the outer corner of each of these uh, on each side so I can screw the whole thing down into a docking station. Or Craig could fix this design and give us a little tab on the outside here that you could screw it down out there so you don't have a hole in your storage box. Another big improvement is the workpiece stop on this. It clips onto this rail right here and you just tighten it down and there you go, you're done. So that's a lot faster than the old K5 version. And if your workpiece is kind of in no man's land between this wing and the, the jig itself, you can pull this off. There's a little dovetail slot, and you can put it on like that. If you don't want to screw the jig down to something, it comes with an included clamp. You can use to clamp it down to a workbench with. This is a nice addition over the K5, which didn't have this option. You could do that with the K4 pretty easily, though. One thing to note, this clamp does not have a quick release, so it can take a while to unscrew and rescrew, especially since you have to close it almost all the way to store it in these boxes. 
So once you have it on here and secured, it's pretty solid. You can clamp and unclamp with it. Uh, it does have a little bit of torsional uh, play that doesn't quite hold down because you're just clamping it down at the one end all the way back here. If you want to use the jig in a different position, like this, it's also got a clamping thing on this side. You can clamp it down like this, and it does really well like that. However, if you're doing a big sheet good or something sticking out this way, that's not on your workbench. Um, so that's not the ideal solution for that side. It has another spot on the other side like this, but there's a big drawback to this one. It is not very sturdy because of the way you're moving that clamp when you're clamping. So you can watch what happens when I clamp something big down with this jig, and it is secured with the clamp down at this corner. That's going to break it. So this does no good on this side. Uh, it's going to tear that plastic right apart. Um, I don't know why they have that there. That's stupid. Look at this. It's ridiculous. The K5 didn't have a great way to secure it down easily, uh, so I had to come up with my own method of that. In this one, I've just got a mounting plate, and with the Craig workstation, I've got dog holes lined up with these holes. Just pop all four of them in. And now I'm ready to go. Dust collection on this is a huge upgrade over the K5, and that's probably the biggest complaint I had about the old platform, is it had terrible dust collection. So you've got a big open slot right here on each side, and you've got this adapter that slides right in there. And it's open on that face, and you can put a vacuum hose directly on this, or you can use the adapter if your vacuum hose is too big. So I've got the M18 3-in-1 vac. It just slides right on there, and now I've got portable cordless dust collection for this, which is awesome. Now, one thing I have had a little bit of problems with is it pulls out a little bit when you're using it. It's not enough to really lose that much suction, but in the long term, I hope it stays in. It's, it does take quite a bit of force to get it out. It's got a little bump on the back here, and you can see it's got some wear on it. And what that bump engages with is there's a little metal bump uh, in this cast aluminum in here uh, that it just kind of pressure fits with. So it, it does a pretty good job of keeping it together. I hope it does in the long haul as well. And this can be engaged on either side, so if you're right or left-handed, you can keep the hose out of whichever way that you're working on the most. If you've got a bigger dust collection hose like this one, this accessory boot has a snug fit on the outside, and then you can attach it this way. Note, you will have to have this clamped down though because the hose is a little bit heavy, and it is going to slide up and down with your jig as well. That's a really huge upgrade over the K5 dust collection, which was probably the worst feature of this jig. This thing pops out all the time. It's got a swivel on it, but it's pretty much useless as far as the swivel goes. And the only thing I've really found that fits this is the Rockler FlexiPort hose kit that you just gotta shove in there, and it comes out half the time anyway. Um, there's no way to get a hose on the outside of this because of how short this stupid adapter is. So I'm, I'm really glad Craig addressed better dust collection with the 720 Pro. So wrapping up, I was really excited to try this new jig when I saw the news they were coming out with it. I went out and bought it myself as soon as I could find it. I bought all the accessories with it, the, the two extra blocks, uh, the drill guide adapters, and I've just been really disappointed by it compared to my K5 that I've had for several years. So I was fully expecting to get rid of my K5, and that's not the case. I'm going to be keeping the K5 instead. Uh, and I'm definitely taking back the accessories that I haven't opened for this thing, and I don't know exactly what I'll do with this yet. But Personally, that's my choice. This thing might have some benefits that you really think are worth it. Uh, it might be worth it for you to pick this one up instead. In the meantime, if you've been on the fence about getting the K4 or the K5, you definitely need to act now because Craig has listed both of those models as discontinued on their website. So I've listed a few retailers that I found in the video description that still have these in stock. If you want to pick up a K4 or a K5, you can check there or let me know if you find them elsewhere because probably everyone else that's interested in them wants to know as well. And who knows, if enough people still want the K5 model, maybe we can convince Craig to bring it back. If Craig's really intent on sticking with the 720 Pro, which they probably are, there are a few changes they need to make right now to make this better. Number one, let's get rid of the ridiculously flimsy attachment points for these storage wings. It needs to be something much more solid th than this. Second, they need to make an adapter so you can take the clamping blocks out and have a parallel surface to clamp to 
and put it on a separate workpiece. That should be fairly simple. That's just a simple piece that clips into here the same way it clips into the jig itself and makes this surface parallel so you can clamp it. That's something they absolutely need to include in all of these kits. And finally, they need to make an HD drill guide block that fits this jig. That's not as critical as the other two improvements that they need to make right away, but it just seems like they're leaving an orphaned accessory out there that you can only use by clamping it to a workpiece instead of putting it in a jig like you could with the K4 and the K5. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Let me know if you think I'm way off base on my criticisms with this jig. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and input. And once again, don't forget to subscribe.